Welcome to the Human Origins. The first thing we want to do is understand a little bit about what this field is all about. For this lecture, we're going to talk about what is biological anthropology. We're actually going to start talking about anthropology in general and the different types within it, and then we'll narrow down into the specific aspects of biological anthropology, which is the subject of this course. Anthropology is a very broad idea. It is simply the study of humans. There's many different things that go into this. Traditionally, we will look at the behavior of people, um, different culture or customs, material culture, so that's any physical object or product. Traditionally, this is pottery, stone tools, or weaving, though today people are looking at the anthropology of how we interact with technology, so we're really bringing this into the modern age. Um, but this can also be the structure of our societies and our language. There are four subfields of anthropology, which you can see right here. First, we have linguistics. So uh, what is the structure of our language? How can we understand the structure of this other language and relate it to this one over here? How do we think they're related? Can we trace back in time what we think languages used to be like? Next, we have archaeology. So this is primarily concerned with looking at material culture, physical objects, and trying to figure out um, what they were used for. Um, because we are looking at old societies, this is also the subfield that is concerned with how you actually excavate a site. You need to be really careful. Um, next, we have sociocultural anthropology. So this is what most people think of when you say the word anthropology. So we're looking at um, the culture of people and how they interact within that culture and how are cultures different from each other. Um, what I think is really cool is looking at the similarities amongst all cultures. Um, but when we're talking about the similarities amongst all cultures, now we're kind of getting into the biological side because biological anthropology is a lot about how are we all the same and what are humans from a biological perspective? A lot of this is the fossil record. So we're digging up fossils, um, getting help from our archaeologist friends to dig them up appropriately, and then trying to interpret what we think they are about. But this field is also about looking at other closely related species, our primate um, relatives, and figuring out what can we learn from them to figure more out about ourselves. Um, so biological anthropology, so here we are now looking at the study of the biology and behavior of humans. Within this, there is a whole lot of things we can look at. Um, we'll be touching on most of these, at least a little bit in this course. Um, we will end the course talking about the fossil record, but we'll also talk about anatomy. We'll be spending a nice good chunk about evolutionary theory and how we can use that to better understand ourselves. Um, we'll also be talking about adaptations that humans have, a little bit about our behavior, a little bit about primate behavior as well. We'll talk about our relation to other primates, um, and then we'll do a little bit on genetics and we won't really be touching much on forensic science in this class, but we do apply some of this when we are dealing with criminal investigations. One of the most fascinating things I think about biological anthropology is it's highly interdisciplinary. So it's not like a unique field in and of itself. What we're really doing is pulling from other independent fields and using them to investigate humans. So we'll be pulling a lot from primatology. That's actually where we're going to start out. How do we understand these other primates so we can learn more about ourselves? We also do a lot with evolutionary biology. How does evolution work? How do species change over time? And how can we use that to understand how humans came to be? Um, we will also be pulling from molecular biology. How does genetics work? How can that help us understand who we are? And we'll even be pulling a little bit from geology, because if we're going to look backwards in time, geology is the field that has figured out a way to understand how things are ordered in rock so we can uh, have an idea of what happened when. There are a couple of big questions in this field. Um, the main one is, how did we evolve? And we will be um, talking about evolutionary theory so we can understand the theory behind that. But then we'll look specifically at the human fossil records so we can have an idea of what the best answer is right now. Um, with the fossil record, we're constantly discovering new fossils. So our answers constantly change. Um, we'll also be talking about the species we are most closely related to and what that means. We'll actually start there. Um, and lastly, Another big question, are, are humans special? Uh, this in some ways is an opinion question and different people will give you different answers. One thing that I want to start out with is this idea of generalists versus specialists. This comes from uh, 
Ecolo classic ecology, so we can classify species as either a generalist, so something that uses a variety of resources and lives in a variety of environments. So uh, cockroaches are one of these. They're everywhere. They eat everything. They're annoying. Most things that are pests fall under this category. Um, next, we have specialists. So they have a really narrow and limited diet. They have a narrow environmental tolerance. So maybe they can't survive if it's too hot or if it's too cold or if there's too much humidity or not enough humidity. Um, if it's a water dwelling species, if there's too much salt, not enough salt, all of that. It's very, very picky. And that might sound bad, but these guys are frequently associated with extreme environments environments that are difficult for other species to live in. So maybe they specialize in really, really cold places or really hot places or really salty places, all of these things. So take a moment and try and answer this question for yourself. Are humans generalists or specialists? Now that you have an idea of your own answer, if you just look at the range of where humans live, um, so this is a little bit of a heat map. Um, because we only have two colors here, it is not very fine scale, um, but the darker red is where we have more humans living, the lighter red is where we have fewer humans living, and the gray is either not uh, nobody or just too few people to show up on this map. But you can see we are kind of everywhere. So if we're just looking at this here, most people would consider humans to be um, generalists because we live everywhere, we eat a variety of things, and we're very flexible. One of the interesting things, though, is if you look at all of the environments that humans live in, um, you'll find some of us in forests or plains. Some people even live in the forest rainforest. Um, we also find people living in really cold or really high altitude places. The cold and the high altitude, these are extreme environments. So humans are the only species that we are also first very general, but also live in many specialized extreme environments. So a couple years ago, someone came up with a brand new term just to describe humans. That we are generalist specialists. So we are generalist species wide, but individual populations have this ability to specialize for extreme environments, which I think is pretty cool. We'll be talking a little bit more about this later in the semester. But this is a good way to think and start to form your own opinion. Do you think humans are special? Um, in general, modern humans, we find them in a insanely huge range of, of habitats. People live in so many different places. Um, but overall, we have low genetic diversity. And this is pretty weird, because if you see a lot of variation in, uh, in any species, you expect diver genetic diversity to be correlated with the physical diversity you're seeing. And humans are kind of the only species where we don't see that. Um, what is happening is it's culture, not biological adaptation, most of the time, which is causing this wide range of variation. And that is just one of the reasons why humans are so cool.